Welcome to this video on energy loss through trophic levels. And in this video, we will discuss what producers, primary and secondary consumers are, um, what pyramids of numbers are and what pyramids of uh, energy are and what the differences are between them. And we will discuss what energy loss is and um, how energy is lost through trophic levels. Before I start talking about energy loss, I want to ask you guys this question. Um, your food contains energy, and what do you use this energy for? We have learned a little bit about it in the chapter on the digestive system. Um, and I'm just going to let you think for a few seconds. In the chapter on the digestive system, we have discussed that energy is used for growth, um, energy is used to replace and repair body cells. Energy is used uh, for movement and energy is used to maintain your body temperature. Uh, so the food we eat is digested in our body, the nutrients are absorbed, and then we use the energy from those nutrients for these processes. Unfortunately, not all the energy that we eat is actually used very well. Um, if we look at this cow over here, um, its energy input is 100% because everything it eats is energy that was put in its body. Um, and only 25% of that energy is actually stored in its body in its tissues. Uh, the rest of the energy is lost. Um, when the energy in your food is used for growth, for replacing or repairing body cells, it becomes stored energy because the energy that was first in your food is now stored in a molecule, in something solid, uh, which could be fat tissue or muscle tissue um, or just it could be used for new cells. The other energy that is used for movement and maintaining your body temperature is lost energy. It is not stored in your body. It is used and now it is gone. Of course, this is not really lost energy because you still use the energy to maintain your body temperature, which is a very important process. But when we look at ecosystems, uh, we do say that the energy is lost because if you were to eat a cow, you would not be able to benefit from the energy that it has used for movement and maintaining its body temperature. Um, and there's also uh, a part of the energy that is not even uh, in your body exactly. Not all the nutrients that you eat are absorbed. Um, some nutrients leave your body with your feces in your excretion. And that is also an example of lost energy. When we look at energy in regards to ecosystems, we often do not just look at one organism and how energy is used or lost in the body of one organism, but we look at several organisms. When we look at food chains, um, we can see that there are different roles within a food chain. Um, organisms can be producers, they can be consumers, and then there's a difference between primary and secondary, and in this case, tertiary consumers. Um, a producer is an organism that can produce its own energy-rich food. So any organism that is photosynthetic, that can just chill in the sun and then produce an energy-rich molecule, um, is a producer. And they are very important in ecosystems because they are able to take the energy from the sun and actually store it in a molecule that other organisms can also benefit from. Consumers are uh, organisms that need to eat other organisms in order to get energy. Um, so a primary consumer is always a herbivore. It's always something that eats plants because the producer produces energy and the primary consumer is the first consumer. So that always eats a plant. Now the secondary consumer is the consumer that eats the primary consumer and the tertiary consumer is the consumer that eats the secondary consumer and so on. Now we can talk about these roles in a food chain um, as um, trophic levels. And then trophic levels are the levels in the food chain occupied by a certain population. So in this case, um, the maize 
uh, are the first trophic level because they are the producers and they produce energy. Um, the locusts are the second trophic level because they are the primary consumers, they are the herbivores, they eat the producers. We can also show food relations uh, in an ecosystem with a pyramid of numbers. And a pyramid of numbers is a visualization of a food chain, um, but it also shows the amount of individuals per population of a food chain. So it doesn't only show what organism eats the other organism, but it also shows how many organisms um, can be fed by a certain amount of organisms. So in this case, you can see that five maize plants can be eaten by 50 locusts, and that these 50 locusts are eaten by five lizards, and that these five lizards can feed one snake. Um, you can see that it doesn't have a very good pyramid shape uh, because there are less plants um, that feed a big amount uh, of locusts. Um, and to kind of solve this problem, um, ecologists have come up with also a pyramid of biomass. Now, pyramids of biomass show the mass of every population of a food chain. Um, and as you can see, this pyramid does look like a pro proper pyramid. Um, and that is because each trophic level is a little bit heavier than the next trophic level. So five maize plants are a little bit heavier than 50 locusts. And 50 locusts altogether are a little bit heavier than five lizards. And five lizards altogether are a little bit heavier than one snake. Now the reason why a pyramid of biomass um, looks like a proper pyramid is because all the energy is stored in the maize plants cannot be transferred to the 50 locusts because the 50 locusts must also use some of the energy for um, movement um, and some of the energy is also lost because they cannot use it. So with each trophic level the biomass, the weight of the population as a whole gets a little bit smaller, it gets a little bit less heavy. To summarize, not all the energy is stored in the body. So not everything that you eat is stored in your body for the next trophic level. We've seen that with this um, visualization of a cow. It eats 100% of what it eats. And only 25% of the energy that it eats is actually stored in the tissues. So the rest of the energy is all lost and therefore it cannot be transferred to the next trophic level. So in a pyramid of numbers, it does not always look like a proper pyramid because sometimes more animals can eat from one um, other organism. So a lot of caterpillars, for instance, can eat from one tree. Uh, and then the pyramid of numbers doesn't look like a proper pyramid. The pyramid of biomass does always look like a proper pyramid because energy that is not stored in the body cannot be transferred to the next trophic level. So this part over here, these parts over there, they visualize the energy that is lost and not transferred to the next trophic level. I hope this makes sense. I can understand that I've used a lot of new terms. Uh, please let me know in Microsoft Teams when you have any questions. Let me know what you think.